The 900 megahertz band used by Vodafone and O2 has been disjointed full of discontiguous chunks of spectrum for decades. In fact, dating back to when the spectrum was licensed to Vodafone and O2 all those years ago. Although, of course, the networks weren't called that back then, with O2 being BT Cellnet, for example. Now, up until recently, each provider had three discontiguous chunks of spectrum in each direction. This diagram and the diagrams throughout this video show only the downlink portion of the spectrum and you can see that Vodafone in red and O2 in blue each have their three chunks in this downlink direction. Now for 2G this wasn't a problem because you could just allocate your 2G channels throughout all those different blocks without any issues at all. And even for 3G it wasn't too much of a problem either. And this diagram shows the 2G and 3G spectrum usage up until very recently on the 900 megahertz band, with Vodafone and O2 both typically operating two 3G carriers in each direction. In Vodafone's case, that's UARFCN 2938 and 2987, with the remainder of the spectrum being for 2G. Meanwhile, O2 operated 2963 and 3012. Prior to the reorganisation, both providers also trialled LTE 900MHz as well through a mixture of refarming some of the blocks used for 3G to 4G or moving the 2G, some of the 2G spectrum over to 4G. In the case of O2's 4G 900MHz trial, the UARFCN 3012, so their second 900 megahertz 3G carrier, was refarmed to 4G EARFCN 3624. Meanwhile, Vodafone did two 4G 900 megahertz trials. The London one refarmed some of the 900 megahertz 2G over to 4G, creating EARFCN 3698. Meanwhile, their trial in the southwest refarmed the second 3G 900 megahertz carrier, so UARFCN 2987, over to EARFCN 3574. Fast forward to today, now that the spectrum has been reorganized and each provider now has two blocks of spectrum in the 900 megahertz band in each direction. The first 3G carriers stay very much the same. So you've got Vodafone's UARFCN 2938 and O2's 2963. And Vodafone's second 900 megahertz 3G carrier stays the same with UARFCN 2987 again. However, from here, it is all change. So after UARFCN 2987, Vodafone then have their remaining spectrum which is used for 2G and then after that is O2 second 3G carrier which is UARFCN 3050 now and after that is their spectrum which is used for 2G. You will note from the diagram that there is 4G 900 megahertz marked on it as LO9. In the case of O2 this is EARFCN 3700 which takes the place of their new second 3G carrier of UARFCN 3050. This has very recently been observed on their London 4900MHz trial, such as Lismore Circus, which is quite a fun site to actually visit. The Vodafone LO9 is marked as EARFCN 3574 on the diagram. And this is as it was before, taking the place of UARFCN 2987. Now, none of us have been down to the southwest to actually try this out. However, in theory, it would fit, so hence why I've left it on the diagram. But they might have like stopped that trial for the time being. As you'll be able to see from this diagram, however, the operators can widen out that 4G 900 megahertz to occupy 10 megahertz chunks of spectrum if they drop down to single 3G carrier each and have a small amount of spectrum left on the side for 2G. 
and that is what I expect we will see going forward. At least once the budget is there, because at the moment it will all be going to 5G deployment. Another technical complexity will be around the basebands that are deployed on sites. Certainly on the Ericsson sites of Vodafone and O2, DUG and DUW basebands are typically used. Now these are only capable of a single technology each. So the DUG, the G stands for GSM or 2G, and the DUW, W stands for WCDMA or 3G. You can see the DUW there, which does 3G 900 megahertz. A pair of DUG 2001s, which are for 2G 900 megahertz. And then these are the RUS 02 band 8 radios. So in other words, those 900 megahertz radios, even though they're multi-mode capable, only really have the baseband to operate 2G and 3G. The other 4G carriers on the sites generally use 6630s on the modern sites I've seen, but I'm not sure what capability they have to also operate 4G 900 megahertz on top of what they otherwise do as well. But anyway, thanks for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this quick look at how 900 megahertz operation has changed in the UK as of late and I look forward to seeing you on the next one where well, hopefully I won't get attacked by quite so many bugs.